G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Do you hate people? Do you hate the way they chew their food loudly? The way they act on social media? The way they treat each other? The way they smell? Ugh. You are not alone. Many of us feel the same way, especially astronomers. Astronomers like us have chosen a solitary pastime where we don't need to necessarily interact with the other monkeys. But humans have some redeeming qualities, which is why I've encouraged you in the past in videos like this to interact with them sometimes, to even potentially hang out with them, because some of them are just as kookily obsessed with space as we are. It's weird, I know. In astrophotography, there's a number of projects you can do with other astronomers. Things like measuring the parallax of the moon so that you can measure the distance to the moon. That's something I did with Terry Lovejoy on this channel a little while back. There's even projects where people video the Earthshine area of the moon from two different locations in order to detect flashes, impact flashes, which literally is about detecting new craters on the moon as they are formed. This is something that people actually do. But the most common way for us astronomers to collaborate is by sharing data and to work together to create an astrophotography image using two different telescopes, two different cameras, two different locations, or even more. And the benefit of this is that you can collect more data and get much longer exposure times and integrations than is possible doing this alone. But let me be clear, I hate sharing my data. I just don't like it. Uh, maybe I'm like anally retentive, like a toddler who refuses to poo. Maybe I just don't want other people playing with my toys. Or maybe it's the imposter syndrome and I just don't want to share my data because it is warts and all and uh, other people will see how badly my acquisition really is. Over on the Astro Biscuit channel, they have a, um, a large data collaboration project, a BAT project. And it's a really great idea and a great concept, but internally I feel like I know in my heart of hearts that a lot of that data, a lot of those collaborators, their data just has to be removed for the image to be as good as it is at the end. I know that in order to get the best image, you do have to remove data. And I feel like if I contributed, maybe my data wouldn't even make the cut. Or conversely, if you have the best telescope and the best camera and the best weather and the best conditions in that data set, what's to stop you from just stacking your own data? Because you have the best data. So the average quality of the data isn't reduced by having other collaborators in the mix. And that's no shade of that project. That's an excellent project. It's just a thought that I've had with all data sharing projects. Should I share my data? I feel like my data would go straight to the standard deviation garbage bin, being outside the standard deviation of good data. But I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking it. And recently I threw aside all of my judgments and I decided to have a threesome with two amazing women, Marsha Wilcox and Andrea Gironis. Two chicks at the same time, man. We connected over on my Patreon where I put the shout out because I had this idea that maybe I should just try this and actually collaborate with other people. So I asked around to see whether there was anyone who had a similar setup to mine so that the image scale would be similar. And not only did I find that, Marsha and Andrea have essentially the exact same setup I do. Three C11s at the same time. Same camera, same telescope, same reducer. It's one for one. I, I couldn't have asked for a better match, really. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you what we learned as data collaborators and how you can go about sharing a project with someone else. Get more data than you're used to, the challenges in processing, and just everything we learned along the way. So come with me and uh, I'll show you a piece of space that I've never seen before. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff.
Before we get going, this video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. Thank you for supporting this channel. High Point Scientific are an American vendor, but they ship basically anywhere in the world now, and they have a range of products, they have a price match guarantee, and they fully support their products. And they have this bad boy. I've been wanting one of these for ages. This is a new Apertura power supply. It's got AC ports, it's got USB ports, USB-C ports. It's basically like everything you need. This is a pretty tidy unit. So uh, yeah, links in the description. All right, back to the video. I think I can hear you guys. How are you? Hey, good, how are you? <laughs> good. It's good to finally meet you guys. <laughs> it's true. Maybe let's start with Andrea. Could you tell me a bit about yourself and your setup? Actually, I am. Um, I got my C11 in 2012. Oh wow! And I couldn't get it to work for many, many years. And finally, during the pandemic, 2020, I sat down with my go-to mount, and I went through every menu, and I memorized every star on the star alignment, and I figured it out. Um, Marsha, can you tell me about your um, photographic? backstory and a bit about yourself and your uh, your current rig. I've been using cameras for quite a while and uh, before I retired I knew I was gonna need to do something different so I went and got a master's degree in photography so I came to astrophotography from the photography side. Yeah wow. Um, I came through as many do photographing the Milky Way and then thinking there's an awful lot in there. Um, speaking of the deep end I have a new version of our image uh, so I'm going to try and share my screen. This is just, just my data. And you can see, um, can you see like it's got, it's got, I haven't exaggerated anything here, just this is just how it is. It's, we've got red stars, we've got blue stars, we've got this nice little brownish, reddish area here where you've got one red star that's casting a bit of a glow, and you've got this faint emission behind uh, the whole target. So I ended up not using Andrea's colour data, and I just used my own because it was flat end-to-end -end, uh, before we mixed it up. But I use all of Andrea's HA, which I mixed in also with yours, Marsha, and mixed in the luminance for 50% just to bring out the brightness of it as well. I also drizzled it all as well. So I upscaled it massively oh. and then pulled it all down to 4,096. So it's it's pretty wide um, and there is still some grain in there. I could have gone a little, a little harder on the um, noise reduction, but... I didn't want to go too too unnatural, so so that's where I landed. Interesting. I I have to say I also really like just the LRGB version as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I to me the biggest struggle was how to add the HA in, and I really quite yeah because just it had almost no red hydrogen in it, but it just had the shadows look better, the color was better. I really found a bit of blue in the reflection nebula in my um, RGB data. Yes. So I um, I struggled with adding the HA. I think that was the trickiest part of this target, actually. I don't think this, this wow. is, I think, my final one that I landed on. Um, uh, it says I had to fix my stars, too. I did put in artificial uh, star spikes because I found that very top star got really messy really fast. But I did all kinds. See, that's just the LRGB, and I wow. it's really pretty. Yeah, you can see that blue. It's beautiful. And you really can see the blue in there. I can flip through. I have, that's a horrible version. That was my fire engine red version. Yeah. This was, I went through many different little things. And um, yeah, lots of them are terrible. So I'll stop sharing now. <laughs> it was a lot of data, wasn't it? How did you guys go? Like, I, I found it really hard, like, just sorting through and trying to crunch too much. <laughs> Yep. I made a little table of our data. You, you guys probably already did that too. I'm happy to show you if you want. Um, so at the end of the day, we had 389 frames in 38 hours worth of data.
I have been. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, so I went for the hydrogen. Um, I was hoping to get contrast and um, I was fussing with this guy a little bit. Andrea, I really like the way you brought out these two stars here. I think this is um, um, LDB 62. I don't know. I was looking at that, trying to figure it out, but I like what you did with it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, VDB something. Yeah, I think it's VDB. Yeah, man, yeah. that is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's a lot more <laughs> colorful than, <laughs> yeah, as you can see. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm very much known in, in my style for um, desaturating almost and, and brightening. But I love how you, you've, you've kept this quite bright and there is no black point clipping here uh you don't see any um you don't see any loss of data in the darkness of the cloud it's really nice oh thanks that's working toward that andrea just before we sign off can uh where can people follow you in your work oh i'm on instagram it's my name andrea underscore jeronis and that's where i post most of my pictures fantastic and how about you marcia um, I'm on Instagram, but not very much, mostly on yep. Facebook. So Marsha Wilcox, Facebook, and I have a website, MarshaWilcox.com is where most of my stuff is. Brilliant. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks for taking the time and thanks for a wonderful collaboration. Yeah, thank you, guys. That was fun. great. It was really fun. Thanks, Dylan, for putting it together. Well, there you have it. Even a social dilettante like me can make friends with two amazing women, two astrophotographers who are far better than I am, especially at image processing, as you can see. It's been a pleasure working with Andrea and Marsha, and Marsha's data was actually stunning to look at, and she did really most of the heavy lifting here for the HA and the luminance data provided for these images. We had a wide-ranging discussion, and a few key points that I could share with you from that conversation with that a little more planning about the exposure lengths that we're mixing up. Uh, ideally, you want to take the same exposure length for all your filters so that when you do mix them all together, they match. The other thing I can recommend is if you can find people like Andrew and Marsha who share the exact same telescope and the same setup as you, that really goes a long way to matching your image scale. So everything is sharp and nice. And finally, when you do share a lot of data, and we were sharing a lot of data on Google Drive, we did go back and forth a little bit trying to clean it up. Uh, when you reduce your data locally on your own machine before you share it, apply all your darks and flats and anything else you want to do and try and make that process as similar as possible to what's happening at the other end and then share your reduced data so that all that's left to do is register and stack and process the image from there. Anyway, I've had a great time doing this small project over the course of the summer and the small little gaps in the weather that I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.